Hello students. Today in paper molecular biology and genetic engineering we are going to focus on techniques of DNA isolation and methods for the purification of DNA. Whenever we are having or we are going for the recombinant DNA technology we must have a purified DNA and for purified DNA there must be isolation is necessary so this DNA isolation it involves the basic three steps in first step there is a need to rupture the cell membrane and only because of rupturing of this cell membrane it is possible to isolate and purificate the purifi purify the DNA afterwards there is a need to separate the nucleic acid because in bacterial cell along with DNA there are the proteins as, as well as uh, the RNA is there so for isolation and purification we have to remove other cell organelles or the debris from the solution but the point is important amount as well as the purity of this extracted DNA is depends upon nature of the cell what type of a cell we are using and how it responds to this techniques <coughs> first step is to grow the bacteria in specific uh, component or specific medium because these are the sources or the bacteria are the sources of our DNA or the plasmid DNA obviously their growth is on the liquid medium or we can say as a broth this is nothing but the medium which is with the essential nutrient and we are going to grow this bacterial cell at optimum concentration or by maintaining the optimum concentration and that is necessary for growth as well as the division of bacterial cell afterwards the growth or this uh, LB medium with the bacterial cells there is a separation of cells by the centrifugation because at high speed centrifugation will separate the specific component depending upon their size and in the next step we have to prepare the cell extract as the bacterial cell is surrounded by additional layer called a cell wall obviously there is a plasma membrane but along with this there is a cell wall and the important step for DNA isolation is to lyse the cell wall so as to release the genetic material and for our study it is important to isolate the DNA there are two methods to isolate this DNA one is physical method and that is carried out by mechanical force whereas in chemical methodologies use of different chemicals like EDTA which is metal chelating agent SDS that is a surfactant and lysosome that is a enzyme or they are, that is enzymatic in nature afterwards we must know the function of the chemicals what we are using for the isolation as well as the purification so lysozyme this is a enzyme and it is present in the egg white as well as the salivary secretion as and the tears what it exactly uh, do in this method so it catalyzes the breakdown of the cell wall and that is specifically a peptidoglycan layer whereas uh, this chelating agent that is ethidium uh, sorry ethylene diamine tetracetic acid or we in small we can uh, pronounce it as a EDTA this is chelating agent and useful for destabilizing the integrity of the cell wall along with this it inhibits the cellular enzyme that degrade DNA as there is a need to isolate or to gain large amount of a DNA so the effort should be taken 
so as to synthesize more amount of DNA by the bacterial cell. And the third chemical is a uh, uh, detergent that is a sodium dodecyl sulfate or SDS. This carries the removal of a lipid molecule and denaturation of a membrane proteins because for isolation and the purification we have to first uh, separate the different ingredients or different parts of the cell uh, that is protein or RNA as, and the DNA. Many of the times the mixture of EDTA and lysosome is preferred so as to get the better result and cell wall which is followed by centrifugation. These chemicals will uh, do some parts of the lysis and afterwards centrifugation that gives us a clear supernatant containing the cell extract. How this is carried out uh, will go in detail in next slides. In third most important step of purification of DNA. This is a third step for the isolation of DNA and this is very crucial because it gives us the final results for the purification. So as we know there is addition of protein and RNA along with the DNA. So again there are different methodologies to isolate uh, uh, or to separate these proteins and the RNA from the cell extract. First is to use organic extraction and enzymatic digestion for removal of a contaminant. These contaminants are like protein, RNA and the cell debris. Then ion exchange chromatography is also uh, used for this purification. Then concentration of DNA sample with some uh, acids is also uh, of preference. Then this is ethidium bromide sesamium chloride density gradient centrifugation method. This is also called as the isopicnic centrifugation. We will go in detail step by step for this purification methodologies. In organic extraction, there is addition of a mixture and this mixture it is with phenol and chloroform which is 1 as to 1 proportion in the cell lysate or the cell suspension what is the role of this phenol and chloroform that they separates the proteins okay then the protein aggregate afterwards by addition of this phenol and the chloroform we will get the different layers and here in this uh, third figure you will get idea how the cell debris or we can say contamination is settled at the base then this organic layer it is with uh, other components of the cell like RNA as well as the proteins and here in upper part of this section we will get protein aggregation as a white mass then the important step to remove these proteins, to remove the RNA, to remove these cell debris. So, we have to first use the protease. We know protease that works for the degradation of uh, proteins. So, by uh, protease, there is a complete removal of uh, proteins. Afterwards, for removal of RNA, there is a use of ribonuclease. And finally, uh, resuspension into the EDTA buffer we will get a uh, finally DNA solution or we can say a purified DNA fragments or the suspension. Ion exchange chromatography is also used for uh, purification. So basic idea is the separation of ions and polar molecules. So as already I told you about cell uh, component that protein small nucleotides amino acids are there and they are there on their charges so we know DNA that carries the negative charge and it binds to the cationic resin or the matrix and with ion exchange chromatography it can be ulited with salt gradient 
in this third methodology of concentration of a DNA sample, use of a salts is a preferred, like sodium acetate or potassium acetate, and they provide metal ions. Like for example, sodium acetate it provides the uh, Na, and potassium acetate it provides the K plus. This is useful for precipitation as well as the aggregation of a DNA molecule and it leaves short chain and monomeric nucleic acid components into the solution. Obviously here ribonucleotides are uh, produced and they are removed by the ribonuclease treatment and they are separated from the DNA. And in the third sorry fourth step which is density gradient centrifugation and here a combination of ethidium bromide that is a dye and sesmium chloride this is also called as the isopicnic centrifugation and it separates DNA, RNA and the protein. So as it is a centrifugation so high speed it is useful for separation of this different components of the bacterial cell. So this sesmium chloride is with uh, density and that is 1.7 gram per centimeter cube and DNA they migrate to the point similar density it is by the DNA and that's why they migrate toward the point which is similar density with the sesmium chloride. Then the proteins they are having the low density and that's why they float here on the top this figure is it gives you idea here this uh, low density is of protein that's why they are floating on the top and RNA pellets they are at the, at the bottom. Ethidium bromide this is uh, uh, intercalating dye we are using mostly for the electrophoresis and that binds DNA molecules along with this it cause partial unwinding of a double helix or the DNA. So uh, ethidium bromide along with sesmium chloride separate supercoiled DNA from the non-supercoiled molecules because in bacterial cell there are supercoiled and non-supercoiled molecules. So supercoiled DNA because it is obviously supercoiled so they have a little freedom to unwind. Why this is so? Because they are not having the free ends that's why they bind in a little amount to the ethidium bromide and obviously there is a decrease in bion density and that is 0.085 gram per centimeter cube and this is less than the linear DNA bion density because they are having 0.125 gram per centimeter cube density. So ethidium bromide and sesmium chloride combinedly separates this uh, non supercoil and supercoiled DNA along with proteins as well as the RNA. So this figure gives you um, in detail idea about the how these molecules are separated. At the end, ethidium bromide which is bound to the DNA it is extracted by N-butanol and sesmium chloride is removed by the dialysis. So because of uh, bion density as these RNAs are having a small density that's why they are at the bottom. Afterwards, depending upon the, their densities, the supercoiled DNA and the um, less coiled DNA they are also separating here with the different layers then the linear DNA and proteins why they are at the upper layer because they are having very low buoyant density and uh, in brief here the higher density component they are at the bottom and the lower density component they are at the top so proteins they are having the low density and the RNA molecules they are having the high density and in between these different uh, types of uh, DNA supercoiled linear and 
non coiled dna are at the middle layers this is the last um, methodology which is useful for separation sorry purification of uh, dna and this is based on the size difference obviously there is a use of enzyme to lyse the cell and edt is also used for better results but there is a use of uh, sucrose bacterial cell is partially degraded with the help of these combinations like lysozyme edta and sucrose they degrade the cell wall and retain an intact cytoplasmic membrane and these are called as the spiroplast so the additional cell lysis it is carried out by non ionic detergent like triton x100 or ionic detergent like sds and they they causes the chromosomal breakage so bacterial chromosomes which are attached to the cell membrane after lysis they are removed from the cell debris and finally we will get a plasmid dna or the pure plasmid dna which is necessary for the other steps of the recombinant dna technology or we can use this plasmid dna for construction of a cdna libraries or the cdna and the recombinant dna and this is the last method sorry this is uh, alkaline denaturation method here a range of ph is matters because in this methodology a narrow ph range of uh, that is used for denaturation of a non supercoiled dna but not the supercoiled plasmid so in the cell suspension addition of a sodium hydroxide to the uh, cell extract or the clear lysate and the ph values are given over here they carry out the disruption of a hydrogen bonds of non supercoiled dna molecules as a result of which the double helix or dna unwinds and two polynucleotide chains separate but as we need a pure form of a dna or the pellet uh, so we have to use the further acid into this suspension so the denatured bacterial dna strands they are uh, aggregated into the tangled mass and this is separated by the centrifugation in which the plasmid dna is as a supernatant and the remaining components or we can say impurities they settle at the base of the tube or the centrifugation tube this figure is also uh, explaining in detail how this uh, high molecular genomic dna and the plasmid dna so by using the sds as well as the noh like salts or by maintaining the high ph how these proteins genomic dna as well as the plasmid dna they are separated by using different uh, technologies so with this i'm going to stop here we came to know in this lecture about the isolation of the dna from the bacterial cell for that there is a need to first grow the bacteria and afterwards there is a lysis of the cell wall so as to remove the different components so as to remove or to, to so as to separate the different components from the cell and finally we will get uh, proteins dna as well as the rna depending upon their size or depending upon the their their density or depending upon their charge we can separate by using different methodologies methodologies and finally we will get pure dna so with this i'm going to stop here we'll meet again in with new techniques thank you